Alrighty, ladies, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so we got a, a micro problem coming at you here. So this is in the factor market. Remember what's going on in the factor market. The factor market differs a little bit from the product market because in the factor or resource market, the buyers are the firms instead of the households. Here the households are selling productive resources or the factors of production, land, labor, and capital. So the problem I'm about to do is going to deal with uh, workers, balloon makers, but this could also deal with uh, machinery or property um, or some other productive resource besides uh, balloon makers. So I'm going to step to the side here. So I've got the number of balloon makers from zero to six. I've got their total product. Now what I'm going to do in a second is I'm going to fill in these two columns here, the marginal physical product and the marginal revenue product. If you think you're really smart and you know how to do this, I'm going to step out of the way. I'll give you a chance to give it a shot and then I'll step in and show you how it's really done. Uh, give it a shot here. Do, 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 do. All right, that's enough. So the total product, this is what uh, the combinations of these workers can do uh, if they combine their efforts. So the first worker, he can make 15. The first and the second worker, they make 29, 1, 2, 3, 42, so on and so forth. When we do the marginal physical product, uh, or the marginal product, sometimes they'll abbreviate on the test, we're looking at what each individual worker brings to the table. Uh, so what the difference between the total uh, products here. So the first worker, if you look, well, when there was zero workers, it was zero. The first worker came in, did 15. So he, on his own, made 15 balloons. Because we're dealing with balloon makers. Is balloon spelled as one L or two? I can't remember. Uh, but the good news is they don't check spelling on the test. Uh, from 15 to 29, that's when the second worker came in. Uh, that's 14. And if you follow me down here, if I set this up right as I intended, it should go 15, 13, 12, 11, and 10 as I do the difference between each one. And as the law of diminishing marginal return says, hey, we hire more outputs or more inputs, we get uh, less output from each input or thereabouts. Now, what did you get for your marginal revenue products? Hopefully, you got what I got because you can't do this yet. The way you get the marginal revenue product is you got to take the marginal physical product and you got to multiply it by the price of your product. Hmm. And I didn't tell you how much the balloons are worth. So you can't figure this out. Because what this is going to do here is we're going to figure out in dollars, we're going to put a dollar value on how much our balloon makers are worth. So let's say, uh, let's say balloons, I'm still going with two. It doesn't look right. I think it's one. Uh, whatever. Two dollars. So all you do is you multiply all these by two, and I'm not going to write it all the way down through here, but it looks like I'll go 30, 28, 26, 24, 22, 20. You can think of this like the benefit that each worker brings to the table. The first worker, he brings in 30 bucks. So he's worth $30. Uh, the fourth worker, he brings in 24 bucks. He's worth $24. So the next question becomes, how many workers should I hire? Tricked you. You can't tell yet because you don't know how much they cost. You have to be able to weigh the cost and the benefits of these workers. So a worker's cost is really his or her wage, so let's say that their wage were, let's say 20, what do I want to choose? Let's say $21 was the wage of your worker. How many workers do you think you would hire? Let me ask you this. Would you hire the first worker? He brings in $30. And you would have to pay him 21. That would seem a no-brainer. He's going to bring in nine more than it costs uh, to hire him. You hire him. 28? Sure. That's bigger than 21, too. And all the way down 
You get to 22, will you hire, will you hire 22? 22 dollars the fifth worker's gonna bring in? Sure, that's bigger than 21. But here, when I get to the last one, 20 bucks, he's only gonna bring in 20, 20 bucks, but I gotta pay him 21? No, 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 no. So if the wage is $21, we'll hire five workers. Because the rule is you hire when your MRP is greater than or equal to your wage. Um, and if we weren't talking about workers, you're talking about a machine, they call it your rent. How about I pose it to you a different way? Uh, so think about this. Let's suppose that instead of being $21, uh, no, it's actually, no, I'm going to do it different. Let's say I want the answer to come out that we are going to hire three workers. Three workers. What would the wage have to be? There may be more than one answer here. So you want to hire three workers. <clears throat> So the thing I'm going to do, first, the third worker is worth 26 bucks. So on the high end of your wage category, it'd be 26 bucks. You could have said, uh, you could have paid him 25, 24, anything 26 and below. All right. Uh, I hope that helps you out. I'm going to do another one here in a second about how the MRP might change. All right, best of luck guys, thanks for listening.